Morocco made history today in Qatar, becoming the first African nation and the first Arab nation to reach a World Cup semifinal. Since the first World Cup in 1930, only European and South American teams have made the final, leading to questions about whether the tournament is making strides toward its goal of global inclusivity. Kevin Blackestone joins us now. He's a contributor for ESPN and The Washington Post. It's great to have you here. So, Kevin, Morocco was not the strongest African team coming into the World Cup, but they have grown with every game. What do you see as the significance of Morocco's historic win? Well, the significance is that they won with um, players who were the progeny of uh, colonization, the progeny of their occupiers, in this case, um, Spain which along with France had, had colonized and occupied um, Morocco for, for many, many decades. Uh, and so I thought that that was what really, really jumped out to me because as I've, as I've watched the World Cup um, over the years, and I recall specifically being in France for the final back in 1998, it's the number of foreign players who wind up starring for European teams and carrying them to glory. And this particular time, uh, it's the other way around. And we have the, the, the foreign-born players um, deciding to play for their ancestral home and finally bringing them to, the, uh, to, to some glory. And so you have Morocco here breaking through um, with uh, Mor people who are Moroccan um, who could have played for uh, other countries but decided to play for their, for their motherland. And for the first time now, we have an African side that's going to be in the final four uh, for the World Cup. This is the first World Cup held in the Middle East. How has that changed the dynamic of the competition? Well, I, I think one of the things that it's done is it's given the rest of the world um, a chance to stand on this stage. You know, I remember when, when Qatar got, um, uh, got this bid back in 20, 2010, 2011, and I wrote that this was really a good thing for soccer when everyone else was bemoaning the fact that it would be in the middle of the English premiership season um, and other European seasons that would be in a climate that uh, no one was uh, accustomed to playing in, um, that it would be in a land that uh, didn't necessarily um, embrace soccer like the rest of the world. But if you're going to be the World Cup and if you're, if you're going to celebrate what you have said is the globe's favorite, um, favorite sport, then you need to take it to the rest of the world. And that's finally what FIFA is doing. That's finally what the Olympics are doing. You know, we had the, we had the, uh, uh, the, the World Cup in um, 2002 that was in Asia for the first time, shared between South Korea and Japan. So this is a fantastic thing for the rest, rest of the world to be uh, involved in staging um, this global event. Yeah. Kevin, I think it's interesting. I mean, help us understand why have South American and European teams traditionally been so dominant? They uh, created the game, or at least modified the game from some ancient games uh, elsewhere around the planet. Um, and they are the ones that put all the money and time and resources into it. And as they begin to enjoy the game, they also begin to export it um, to their colonies, to their protectorates, um, to other lands around the world that they, that they occupy. And I think, um, you know, in my reading of, of what people have had to say about the export of sport, um, particularly when you're talking about uh, European sport, it's been um, exported not necessarily as a noble cause, um, but as a way to instill European sensibilities and European um, uh, ideas uh, elsewhere around the planet. And in doing so, um, and in teaching uh, people who hadn't played this game traditionally how to play it, um, they also began to to harvest that talent and bring it back to the to the European leagues. Um, and, and now you're starting finally to see that reverse, um, that, that talent is, is starting to go back and play for the ancestral lands. Wow. As we uh, wrap up our conversation here, I wonder if uh, you might be able to share a thought or reflection about American soccer journalist Grant Wall, who died suddenly last night. Yeah, Grant Wall was the uh, primary voice, the written word, uh, for soccer in this country for um, for a couple of decades, um, and I didn't I didn't know him, um, but we crossed paths at at several World Cups, uh, and you know he was very fortunate, and I think the game of soccer was very fortunate um, that he was able to dedicate uh, his career um, to writing about to writing about this game. 
and a lot of people um, know about this game uh, in this country, um, not just from broadcast, but also from being able to read uh, what Grant Walls had to say say about it for for so many years. And so this is a uh, you know it's a tragic loss for journalism, it's a tragic loss for sports journalism, and in particularly uh, for soccer journalism. Yeah, tragic loss indeed. Kevin Black of Stone of ESPN and the Washington Post. Thanks so much for your insights. Appreciate you. Thanks for the invite.